let's have a quick chat before we get started today. What do you say? First off, by hook or crook, I've actually been fully monetized on YouTube. I know, I know, I can't believe it either. But this is great news for a couple of reasons. First, if history is any indicator, this gives the Google gods incentive to let the channel actually grow. You know, if I make money, they make money sort of thing. Secondly, if I can actually pull this off and stay monetized, I can spend less time working my main day job, if you will, and slowly transfer over to full-time content creator. And with the help of Rumble, I can still once or twice a week let it all out, so to speak. Over there, not risking everything. Over here, on an election shenanigan video. Now, please be patient with me at first, as some days, at least it looks like so far, I may be waiting to post videos due to the monetization process taking so long. That's not just because of money. So you see, when you're a monetized channel, they want a certain percentage of your videos to be fully monetized, to stay qualified to monetize. It's, it's a communist thing, I'm sure. Also, the background footage will become a little more vanilla, let's say, than usual. I'll need to use even more footage of newscasts in the background, giving them zero reasons to demonetize things moving forward. Now, of course, that doesn't change the content whatsoever. The things I'll be speaking about and the way I'll speak about them will be exactly the same, of course. Now, all in all, this is a good thing for you, the viewers. This should mean that over the next several months, I'll be able to add a lot more perspective on a lot of the BS going on in this crazy world and just add to your list of logical thinkers on news stories. And that's something everyone needs these days, right? As always, thank you for following me through this screwed up journey. I am forever grateful. Now, let's get started. Every once in a while, someone... Some adult who you'd assume would know better says something so stupid you really have to worry if they're having a stroke or suffering a closed head injury. More often than not, the person whose health you're concerned about, if we're being honest, is a Democrat. Less frequently, however, that person is the former Speaker of the House. The longer Nancy Pelosi sticks around, the more likely it is that this level of idiocy will become the norm. So what exactly did Nasty Nancy say this time? Upon the news breaking about the sealed indictment against President Trump, the 83-year-old tweeted, quote, The grand jury has acted upon the facts and the law. No one is above the law, and everyone has the right to a trial to prove innocence. Unquote. Now, granted, Nancy Pelosi, Nasty Nancy, is very, very old. That passage of time has not just led to her having so many facelifts that her ears literally touch in the back of her head, but to a slippage of epic proportion when it comes to her already limited intelligence. You see, our system of justice does not afford defendants with the, quote, right to a trial to prove innocence. It provides the presumption of innocence until they have been proven guilty Probably not a big point to a woman that is, I mean, literally technically above the law, obviously, considering how much her husband's raked in over the last decade. But let's play Nancy's game. The media drools over her like she's something special. So let us follow her lead and provide Democrats with the opportunity to prove they are innocent. Anything less would be wrong, even an injustice, would it not? So in this frame of thinking... We need to put Nancy and Paul Pelosi on trial to see whether or not they've used insider information she obtained as Speaker of the House, or worse, things she made happen as Speaker to enrich herself. This investigation needs to be thorough and years long. Sure, there's a better than average chance that the octogenarians won't be around by the end of the investigation, but it is their estate after all. Therefore, it can continue for years after they drop dead. And in the interest of justice, which we all know Nancy cares so deeply about, if it consumes a large percentage or even all of what she intends to be passed on to her children and grandchildren, so be it. Justice, after all, right? Then, of course, we need to launch an investigation into those Clintons, probably the Obamas, and finally, the Bidens, to find out how these people with no marketable skills whatsoever managed to become so damn wealthy, some of the wealthiest in the country, all the while 
working to help the poor, right? <laughs> it's kind of weird. They all dedicated themselves to helping the poor, yet they've managed to get rich while doing it. Who knew the key to wealth was whining about how others don't have it? But we really need to let them prove they didn't break any laws in pursuit of their goals. It would be simply wrong to deny these families their day in court to demonstrate their innocence. And I do mean their whole family. Anyone who may have even conceivably received a dollar of ill-gotten gains needs to be afforded the chance to clear their names. And sure, it will likely cost them more than what they are alleged to have received, but the entirety of their net worth is a small price to pay for the opportunity to exercise the right to a trial to prove innocence. I mean, come on, people. There can't be Democrats out there who would get upset over the right to prove they didn't commit a crime in the first place, right? They most certainly would not want people named Trump or anyone else loosely associated with someone of that name, with the exception of that pathetically weird niece leftists seem to find useful, to be able to exercise that trial to prove innocence, right, and deny it to others, especially themselves. AOC, or Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, needs a trial to prove she didn't benefit financially from the tens of thousands of dollars in gifts that she received from her trip to the Met Gala. People have accused other members of the goon squad of funneling money to the enemies of America. It would be wrong to deny them the chance, via extensive investigations, of course, and multiple trials to prove they didn't do anything wrong. Final point, we'll wrap this up. Yes, most of these people will go dead-ass broke paying for their lawyers, but how can you put a price on your good name? What price is too high for, quote, the right to a trial to prove your innocence, unquote? Democrats deserve to find out, don't they? After all, they do the same damn thing to you if they had a chance. Most of this came by way of townhall.com. If you'd like to hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't. Leave a comment down below. There's a PayPal link in the description box, so please put a dollar in the bucket on the way out the door. I'd like to thank everyone for all your donations. They're much needed and much appreciated. Now, with all that being said, we'll see you next time. Hi. Come on, move. Move. Easy. Easy.